All right, folks, welcome to another edition of Fish Addictions, The Real Talk. Not bad. Thank you. Maybe I'll let you do it once in a while now. All right, perfect. Now, <laughs> now I have to take it from the top and go into my immediate defeat okay. and then roll on out. Okay. All right, folks, welcome to another episode of Fish Addictions, The Real Talk. Coming into this episode, I have been defeated. We put up a poll for our listeners for whether or not we should do video and audio or just audio. And the resounding results were that the video needs to remain. So, boom. First off, thanks you guys, thank, thanks to you guys for listening. But also, I don't love how much extra work you're making me do. Yeah, for you guys that don't know, Thor is the one that takes this <laughs> and puts it together while I get to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're here filming. I mean, there's a lot of appreciation in this room. There is, and and I respect that, and my mom appreciates it. And you Hi, know, Thor's mom. Hello, mother <laughs> and father, since you're here, probably. <laughs> if mom's watching it, dad's probably watching it, too. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it is and it isn't an extra chore. You know, we're, we're here at 11 p.m. on a Friday night putting together this podcast. And yeah, we are. But but we're not going terribly out of our way to do so. It was, we were here. I mean, honestly, we've been having conversations for the last three hours. About right. Well, I, I got life. here at 6.15. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So four hours. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we could have started this podcast at any point. But fun fact, the reason I came out here was to make it so we could do the podcast live. Which this episode is not. So anybody listening no. to it after <laughs> the fact... This episode is not live. But we have the capabilities to go live. We now have the capabilities to just randomly go live. Would would you want to see that? I don't I don't know that I care. Okay, yeah, I guess. I'll say it. We're I mean, doing this podcast, I mean, and the whole thing about this podcast is we're talking about whatever we want right, to talk about. Right, so. You know, I, I want viewers to be there, but I want the ones that, you know, so from, from an analytical standpoint. Oh, boy. I want... Every oh, view. We're going down a rabbit hole now. And every share and every comment and every like, even dislikes. I want every fan interaction that I can get. Yeah, but it kills you to have that camera on right now. I don't love it. I don't like being on camera. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a super pretty person. I understand that my value in society is not even remotely based on my looks. I get that. It is what it is. Pretty people. I'm a little jealous of you. We're all beautiful in our own way, Thor. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing. When we go live, we have subscribers that have their notifications turned on. We have our subscribers that have the notifications turned off. It's fine. But turn them on. R- right. You can turn them on. If, <laughs> if, if you want to know the second that one of our videos drops, make sure that when you're subscribed, because I know you all are, make sure that that bell is lit up and get us that get that notification every time that we come live. Three seconds of silence so you have time to go subscribe. All right, we're back. <laughs> and this 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 is not a plug to subscribe. Yeah, it is. No. For me it is. No, for you it is. But but here's the thing. I when when we do bring this podcast to a live platform, the reason that we're doing it is so that people that have questions can ask it. We can look up on the TV screen here that they can't see, but they'll, you know, if we're live, they'll notice us looking away. Yeah. That's so that they can ask us questions and we can respond in real time because we care. We care about all of our fans, but those that are passionate and and have their notifications turned on and they're making sure that they're not missing fish addictions content because those people are out there. They get to ask their questions live. And you know what? They might say something ridiculous. I'm going to be honest. I'm not a great moderator. Every other live stream that I've ever participated in, I've not been, I've not been crowned the moderator. I'm not going to do a great job. But I'm just going to look up and be like, oh, this dude's got a good question, and I'm going to read it. And who knows? It might be, hey, what, what brand of beer are you drinking? Or how was the fishing today? But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll answer all the questions. We'll get there. We'll do it all. I mean, we'll answer most of the questions. Yeah. I could think of a few questions I want to answer. Well, I mean, I know you're not going to tell people secret baits and what lake you're fishing. Yeah, and well, all the, why wouldn't I do that? Well, 
Because what happens if everybody overfishes that lake then? Because it's not going to happen. Oh, no, I should, I should <laughs> stop and go back. Yes, I believe lakes can get overfished. No, I will not tell people coordinates. Yes, I will give people as much information to help them as I can without doing it for them. There you go. That's fair, isn't it? I would say that's fair. I mean, I would also say that I'm very glad that I work for Fish Addictions as opposed to being a fan for Fish Addictions because you do do all the work for me when it comes to finding fish, and I love it. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) (laughs) So anybody that is a diehard, passionate angler, feel free to send an email to info at fishaddictions.com, and let's see if we can work something out. Well, here's my philosophy on that, right? I like to give people as much as I can give them without technically doing it for them i get that i I don't like to put people on the x because it's not as fun uh right i I do have a little bit of a sucker spot if you're like i'm taking my six-year-old out fishing and i don't want him to go out ice fishing and not be successful i'll be like don't tell anybody i so now you know my weak spot i it's always been kids i am a absolute sucker for giving anybody just about all of the information that I have about what bite I'm on. I don't know what it is. It's because you want people to, there's, there's either, there's one of two reasons. You just want people to enjoy what you enjoyed, what you just got done doing, because there's a lot of people that aren't in our shoes. That'll go out, have an absolute stellar bite. And it's going to be three weeks before they can get back to it. And most likely, the bite's not going to be there anymore at right. that point, whether or not a single person fishes it or somebody else does. Um, and it depends on the lake. Depends on the pressure the lake can take. There's a lake that I can think of right now that if people knew of the bite, it would be over quick. We wouldn't have it for years. Right. We got to be careful with that. We talking about Lake X episode one? Uh, no, no. You know, crazy thing is, is people from my hometown knew that, knew where we were at. I'm sure that they did. They did because that was like old stomping ground. Oh, yeah. Old stomping ground. And I think people from where I grew up go back there and check it out. It was so good back then that they go check it out once in a while. You know, and, and that's why we went and checked it out again. Right. And, I think that there's a case where, you know, Jeff Jeff Anderson posted a video just the other day. Jiggy. On a lake that I have fished one time. And I watched his video. And I said, you know what? I know exactly where they're fishing. Because when I was out there in my boat, that looked like where I wanted to be. The fish just weren't there when I was there. And... He just didn't have the right angle in your dangle. Right. I, I also didn't have the right mindset. You know, it was it was a deep grinding bite. Uh, at least it would have been in the boat. And I wasn't I wasn't in the mood for that. So I went and hid in some back bays and I threw I threw flies for smallmouth bass and it is what it is. But I do know that I could go back and probably replicate the bite that he filmed the other day. On ice? Mm-hmm. What was he catching? Smallmouth. Huh. And a, a few non-targeted rainbow trout huh that got mixed in that also helped give the lake away oh yeah that absolutely helped yeah because there's there's very is it where taylor had his dog in the boat no or you had your dog i had my dog in the boat and taylor's wife was worried she was gonna fall out of the back of my basket is that the lake yep so our guys have been fishing that for weeks i don't know if they've been out there on the ice yet isn't that where Taylor went with the... Nope. No? Different lake. Oh, okay. It is... So for everybody out there, we were out on Juggler Lake, uh, Taylor, Melantine, and I. This is not the lake in question. But we were out on Juggler Lake chasing smallmouth. We found exactly zero while we were out there. Ugh. So we spent uh, sun up to sundown and one trailer bearing to find out that there are not smallmouth lake anymore that we were able to find. 
But while we were replacing the bearing on my boat trailer, we had an old timer that had to sneak around the road on us. And he mentioned that this other lake was uh, now where you wanted to go for smallmouth fish. Gotcha. That probably gave it away. That's probably getting cut. We'll see. I think you just bleep out. Ba-doop. Yeah, well, whatever. That's not that hard, is it? Huh? No? I don't think so. I have voice over it. Tyler's a great editor, too. Might send this one to him. Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. Keep it all. I have been told, and I'm curious to see what our, our listeners' reaction is. Is the raw, uncut audio and video what you guys want to see? Or do you want us to see us clean it up a little bit and post? Because it, it is a good question. Because I, I will be forthcoming. I do very little actual editing. I don't think you need to. This is a podcast. We're sitting down. We're having right. a conversation. It's The conversation isn't the conversation if you're taking part of the conversation out, Thor. Right. And that's and that that's what I'm inclined to believe, but most of the podcasts that I listen to seem to be a little edited. Yeah, but why do we want to be like everybody else? I, I, I mean, I'm not just I'm just not saying like that's what we want to be. I think I'm you're just, trying to be like everybody else, Thor. No, no. No, no. If you're like everybody else, that means you don't beat anybody. We're gonna start a fight. No. I I will throw down. See, the podcast world is a friendly world. They help each other. They support each other. That's what I've always been told. I agree. But I will say right now on record, the only podcast that I won't fight is when Joe Rogan has literally anybody on his podcast. I don't want to fight Joe Rogan plus anyone. Yeah. Mike Tyson. But other than that. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Yeah. Like, does Patrick listen to this? Oh, Patrick's awesome. Why would you want to fight Patrick? Because it would end in a hug. True. Free Patrick hug. And if you haven't heard Patrick's podcast, we'll give him a little plug here. The Lone Angler. Get over there. Check it out. Put a link in the description for you. Also, is Patrick Olson the Minnesota? He's not my brother, okay? I know he's, he's my a, friend. I know he's not your brother. <laughs> He's a good friend. So he's almost so a many people ask him and I that. Are you guys brothers? Same relation or not? Really, nope. Sorry. Same last name. No relation, but still basically brothers. We hug. They hug. I mean, I, yeah. I see brothers. Not weird hugs. Either. No, because just bro- like his hey, brother. How is it going? Bro- brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Where was I going? Patrick Olson mm-hmm. may or may not have caught a state record rock bass through the ice a couple years ago. And I don't think he ever got it certified. It was a line record. Was it? Yeah. So it was a line record. But yeah, I think he did end up. Uh, maybe not. I don't, I don't remember. Know if he Patrick, certified. tell us. But this man. I guarantee Patrick's listening because he is a giant supporter of everything we do, as are we of what he does. So Yeah. I uh I was out on Mille Lacs this summer for the first time ever. I grew up. So I'm, many people love that place. I'm a little ashamed to say this. I grew up 45 minutes from Mille Lacs Lake. It took me until I was 27 years old to fish on Mille Lacs Lake. Did it let you down? Yes and no. I I'm not willing to say that Mille Lacs let me down so much as my skill as an angler let me down. I uh, I saw a lot of people catch fish. I saw a lot of fish. I did not catch a lot of fish. And I, I think that had a lot to do with, <clears throat> with me as an angler not fully understanding how to take advantage of that phenomenal fishery. I was targeting smallmouth while I was out there. And, you know, so it's, I, I can't blame the lake as much as, you know, it was my first time out there. And it was very humbling. But... There was a point where I was throwing a DT-15, and I caught a rock bass big enough that I put it on the scale. Really? It was like two pounds. Whoa. It ate a hook. It wasn't like it got You snake. know what's weird? Like, I've never had the urge to weigh a rock bass. I think I've caught some fairly big ones, but I look at those little ugly creatures, and I throw them right back. Right. But this is, this is a two-pronged thing, because... 
pro staffer Chris Rothmeyer and I have a ongoing wager about who is the Rock Bass Sheriff. Oh, you are for sure. No, well, yes. There is one particular trip where you took that oh, crown yeah. and it'll never go away. Right, but Chris continues to send me pictures of his Rock Bass. But then Patrick Olson got into the conversation and what goes out and catches state record size rock bass. That's because he's literally got a bush. Well, he's got the bush. I mean, we all hope the to have, rock bass bush. I mean, we all hope to have the bush at some point in our life, whether it's on the water or not. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> back but, to fishing but so i catch this big rock bass and the first thing i do i look for patrick in my phone book don't have him look for patrick on my snapchat don't have him i end up sending this picture to patrick on facebook instantly did he respond oh in immediately dude is like i am so proud of you like nothing <laughs> like you guys What's think, he called by rock bass? Party crappie. Party crappies. Oh, you Lord. Know, you, you, you think about it, and, and it is a thing that we as anglers, we run into, right? There are thousands of species of fish. What do we film? We go out and catch walleyes, catch crappies. perch, catch crappies, catch bluegills. Pike. Pike. Trout. But but only big pike. You know, nobody's nobody's filming 14-inch pike. No. You know, there there are a lot of species of fish, especially in our area, that get underplayed. And you know what? I'm going to say it. I respect the guys that chase the weird fish. Oh, there's nothing not to respect. It's just... You know... I don't even know what it is. Like, I had fun fishing party crappies with Patrick. We right. had a lot of fun doing it. Right. I don't mind catching them. It's just the mindset to get into catching is they're like one well, they're like the raccoons of the forest. Right? But there's a lot of guys that spend a lot of money hunting coons oh, over you, here. You're right. No doubt about it. You know, it's it's one of those things where we're we're very quick to judge why people are interested in what they're interested no, in. No, we're not. We just have laugh at them. Well, we, but, we think it's foreign. Like but that's I, judgment. You like to fish bass. I'm not a big bass fan. He likes to fish rock bass. You and I are not big rock bass fans, right? I mean, it just is what it is. I don't. I don't want to call it judgment. That sounds so terrible. It it does sound terrible. I appreciate the fact that he likes to fish, and what he chooses to target is a rock bass. And I'm fine with that. But he likes all weird fish, right? Whether it's the sucker or and and that's, I mean I think even sturgeon is too mainstream for him. Right. I mean the only picture of him that I've seen holding a walleye, he lipped it like uh, a bass. Yeah. Like he forgot that walleyes had teeth. That's all right. Or the walleyes and we shouldn't single Patrick out. There's plenty of no, guys no. that right. that like this kind of stuff. It's just that Patrick is closest to us, and right. that's what he likes. But. You know, it's it's interesting because like you say, you know, I am pas passionate about bass fishing. You're passionate about walleye fishing, mm -hmm. at least at, on a tournament level. And, you know, you, you you wake up thinking about walleyes. You fish for other species, but walleyes is what you prefer. Open water, yeah. You know, but but we both prefer a mainstream fish. Yeah. You know? Sure. But... I, I also have people that I that I follow on on different social media platforms that are are passionate about different things and in 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 the scope of the outdoor industry people send friend requests and and Instagram follows and whatever in a way that you know you just kind of accept them you don't really think about it you don't always know the people that you're following it I have a Facebook friend who is a diehard passionate carp angler. Hmm. That's what he fishes for. Bow fishing? No. Angling. Hmm. And I have Takes zero. Takes out the old can of corn. Oh, corn, hair rigs. I, I don't even. It, it, it gets into the point that I don't even know what he's talking about. And I have zero interest in catching carp on purpose. But do you read? what You always oh. pay attention. Oh, any time no, he posts something. I'll agree with you. I got different guys. If, if you know, if it's a whatever dogfish or yeah. carp or i mean carp can get giant oh yeah i mean this guy's going on catching 40 30 i i 
I think 30 to 40 pound carp. I don't know for sure. Again, like I might be exaggerating. He, it might be a double exaggeration because it's a fisherman telling a fisherman's story. So I don't, I, but they're like, I mean, they're carp, they're giant. And I'm like, damn, just for the fight alone, like, you know, it's just like, I mean, we catch sturgeon on a somewhat regular basis. I mean, it doesn't matter when you're a fisherman. It does it true. I mean, people have egos about the type of fish they fish, whether you're musky, bass, oh, walleye, yeah. pike, carp, whatever. You have your own little, I don't know if ego is the right word, but in the end, it's kind of like anything else. Like the tug is the drug. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what it is, right? So I I appreciate walleye fishing more because I spend more time doing it and and when you spend more time doing something, there's always something new to try. Uh, so, like, until I feel like I have tried everything that I want to try in the walleye realm of things, whether it's trolling, casting, bobbering, vertical jigging, whatever. Wal- walleyes on the fly. I, I would try it walleyes in the, the right fly. certain situation. I don't know how to fly fish. Josh has tried to get me to fly fish a gazillion times and i think i think he just wants me to fly fish so he can laugh at me for a whole day i want you to fly fish so i can laugh at you for like 15 minutes but then i think after 15 minutes you'd probably get it because there's it's it's obviously different the hand-eye coordination thing and like i've watched it and i'm like but like i would probably still be very terrible at it i would try my dangness it just is what it is don't do that to me and that, you know what, you know, it's funny. If we have fly fishermen that are watching us, they're going to crucify my mocking of a fly fishing. I cast. thought you were playing a violin. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, either way. But I I wonder, you know, if this, if this judgment, we're going to call it judgment. It might not be what it actually is. But if this, you know, because when, when we start angling, as most of us as young kids, some of us as adults, we go out with the intention of catching a fish. Doesn't matter what kind of fish. You know, when you when you take your kids out fishing, you want to make sure that they catch as oh. many fish as they can. So, so what you're saying is, is your intentions are I'm gonna go fish bluegill, I'm gonna go fish walleye, I'm gonna go fish bass. Well, it's it but but before that, it starts as I'm gonna go fish for whatever bites. Right? Does it though? Because as as far I, back as I can remember. Out at White Earth Lake by Wabin, Minnesota, where I grew up and and really got to love fishing, it was, let's go catch. And I do have a deep, dark secret that's going to come out right now. It would be, let's go catch bluegills and party crappies. All like, right. literally, we would fill the boat. And please don't judge me when I say fill the boat. When I was younger, my grandfather, and probably yours too, yeah, probably yours, we grew up in the generation of fill the cooler. Yeah. Because absolutely. that is the game. The game was fill the cooler. Right. We would fill the cooler with bluegills and rock bass, and we would fillet and eat those things all the time. And when we went out, it was fill the cooler every time. And if we didn't, shame on you. Low key, cold water crappies are some of my favorite fish. I'm eat. talking about rock bass, man. Like we ate them Did rock I just bass. Say crappies, I meant to say rock bass. Yeah. Low key, rock bass are some of my favorite fish to eat. We used to catch them up in Canada. I mean, we ate the ever living crap out of rock bass oh, yeah. and bluegill. They're tasty. I can remember bringing buckets full up to the cleaning shack there. And they were big. I don't know how big they were. Obviously, I was a little guy, so I thought everything was big. Right. But I don't honestly ever, and maybe I'm wrong, but every single time I had a rod in my hand, there was a key species that we were after, and it was very well known. I don't think I ever went fishing just to fish. Okay. It was a target. So, And and I I could be in the minority here. So I guess because your your point does make sense. Growing up, we chased bluegills and we chased crappies on my grandparents. But lake. more specifically, it was we're gonna go. This is what we're going to do. We didn't just go out in the middle of the lake and just start casting and hope right. hope we caught something. We were targeting something. Yep. 
and, one way or the other. And so, so maybe it's different, but at least for me, when I started fishing on my own, yeah, you know, cause I, I grew up in the, in the central Minnesota area. We had the Mississippi river that ran right through town. And that's probably my thing. I grew up in Aiden, Minnesota, where you fished in the river or the river, because mm -hmm. we were like one of the only counties in the whole state that actually didn't have a lake in it. Right. So, but we would, you know, we'd get done with school. We'd, we'd grab fishing rods. We'd hop on our bikes. We'd bike mm -hmm. down to the river. And at least for me, maybe for my buddies, it was different. But the goal was just to catch fish. Yeah. We didn't care if it was a pike well, sure, or a Well, sure, in the end it you is. Know, it's, but, then, but then as you get into it, it's, all right, I want to go down there and catch walleyes. Or I want to go down there and catch bass. Goals. I think that's something that's in common for every fisherman out there. Every time you hit the water or the ice, you have a goal. Right. I think. And then and then the goal the goal gets more specific from there. Sure. Where it's okay, I figured out how to catch walleyes most of the time that I go out on the water or I've figured out how to catch bass most of the time I go out on the water. But like for me, I love skipping skipping jigs under docks for bass, which albeit is not one of the most technical or the most the hardest ways to catch bass. I mean there's some some marginal skill involved in skipping a jig and not backlashing whatever. But but you you grow into your goal becomes a very specific way to catch fish, you know, where you you go out on the lake Dude. and you say, I want to catch my walleyes by cranking fish. I don't care if I catch zero today, but I am going to work on crankbait trolling. Yeah. Walleyes. Do you set a goal every time you go out or do you set like I have goals on an everyday basis and I have a yearly goal mm -hmm. uh, like my yearly goal has been getting better at jig wraps. And that's that's in general, casting, vertical jigging, mm -hmm. doing whatever I can think of with jig wraps. Like, let's go outside the box. Let's do that. I've had that goal. Uh, you know, I've had goals of bobber fishing, being more patient. Like, you do all this, you know, all these different types of fishing, and certain ones take patience, certain ones take this and that. Uh, so I set goals, not only species goals, but technique goals as well. Right. Yeah. So I'll set like, like daily practice goals. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily like, I don't like training a dog. Like you're going to get 15 minutes of this. Well, you know, I don't, I don't appreciate the idea that I think of my days on the water if I'm not tournament fishing at or fishing for content. Like I don't like thinking about them as being like, those are training days, but you know, I'll, I'll take something where, you know, I had, there was a point in my life where I'd never skipped a wacky See, that's work. crazy because every day on the water for me is a training day. Like, that's how I think of it. Like, right. But, but I don't want to, I, it is that way, but I don't want to think about it that way. Like other people the in the boat, up. like I try to be like, hey, this is how I would fish if I was trying to catch a bunch of fish. Right. But I'm going to be up front and I'm just going to be doing my thing. Don't worry about what I'm doing. If it starts working, let's totally change. Right. But I'm going to try something totally different, off the wall, wacky. It probably won't work, but let's try it. Right. You know, so there was, there was right into, so the, the time where I started targeting bass and the point where I started tournament bass fishing were very close to each other. Yeah. You yeah, know, they were, I, uh, I, I went from bass fishing is throwing spinner baits next to docks in July. And the next April I fished my first bass tournament. And so I, I quickly learned that, you know, there's techniques that I need to learn how to do. So I went out to one of the lakes where I knew that I could catch bass on a somewhat consistent basis. And the only rod that I had on the deck was a wacky worm. And I fished with a wacky worm for like five hours until I was like, I'm pretty sure I can replicate this somewhere else. And then I went home. But but because of that, you know, I was able to force myself to develop that that interest in that. And but but at the same time, that that specific interest makes it so that it's hard to branch out into other things. You know, there's there's lakes that you know there's a lake that you and I both like to fish um, near Mentor, where every spring there is a phenomenal largemouth bass frogging bite but there are also opportunities to catch a giant carp on fly rods same lake yep hmm. yep 
and and not only in the in the fly fishing world for these carp, but in the spearing spearing and bow fishing world for sure. Yeah. You know, but every time every time I'm on my way to the way to the boat launch because I'm getting off as it's getting dark and they're getting on as it's getting dark, I look at those guys and I go, <laughs> losers. <laughs> You know, I'm like, that's a bat. You know, that's a sweet rig. You're a that- terrible person, Thor. I yeah, and that and that's that's to wrap this back after 30 minutes of. Are we too judgmental about other fishermen? Ah, uh, I think that's a personal thing. I'm I, if you love to fish, I love that you love to fish. Right. I I, I have different opinions about the fish I love. I think that's fair to say that we have a yep. little bit different opinion. Yep. But again, it's only an opinion. I get what you're saying. But I think it varies. There's a lot of multi-species anglers, though. There are. Especially if you live in the state of Minnesota. Like, I know walleye is like the thing. But I'm sorry. You go to a lot of these small lakes, you got to be okay with catching everything else. Right. And... Part of me is jealous. That they can just let their mind go free. Yeah, but those carp guys are probably thinking the same thing about you. Like that so so that guy, that guy just got done bass fishing all day. I feel bad for him. Right. No, no. So so part of part of me is jealous of the true multi species angler. I I mean I can count on a hand, maybe two hands. The number of times in a year that I target something other than than bass, largemouth or smallmouth. Oh, I agree. I I but there's an old saying that, you know, hey, I'd rather be good at one than okay at a lot at a bunch, right? I mean, that's really the end goal. You like the tournament fish. So to be competitive at tournament fishing, you have to kind of put your resources and pull your resources to one one avenue. Right. And if you don't, Tournament fishing isn't that fun when you're getting your butt kicked all the time. I've got my no. tail end whipped many a times, and I've done well. And you know, when you do well, and at the highest, at the highest uh, there is, it's a totally crazy feeling, right? And and just because you're doing well in a tournament doesn't mean you're having fun. I think that's something that people don't realize. You don't have fun when you do well, but. But you're but you're doing well at work. You know, there is you know, there is a stress level. I you know because if you go out into a if if you launch boat number one on the last day of a tournament, you're worried about everybody hunting you. You're not having fun that day. Oh, there's a certain part of it, but that's part of the game, right? Right. But but I, it's not truly fun. Oh, you're having fun. It's exhilarating. It's fun going out in first place because then you're like, these guys wanna know what I'm doing. And I just got to go out there and do it better. Right. I suppose. But I guess because even, I guess the tournaments that I've done well in, because I fish almost exclusively one day tournaments. So when, when you're having a good day, you know, I spend a lot of that day wondering if I'm doing well because everybody's doing well and the bite's just that easy. Oh, that's, that's. Or if I figured something out and I, and I worry about it in the back of my head. I, I think I could have part part of being a good tournament tournament angler is having those thoughts, never being satisfied. You can't be satisfied during a day of a tournament. You have to you are literally there to put the best five fish, in most cases five fish, yep. the best five fish in the boat that you can. And if you put if in your head, like I always have a weight that I would be happy with. But I'm never satisfied with. You cannot be satisfied. Now, granted, there are tournaments where you can put six fish in the live well, and once that six fish is in, you're done. Yep. And there's fish. I've I've there's I've had tournaments where you put those six fish in, and you're like, man, did I make the right decision? You know, uh, or if they come in the right order, it's like heck yeah. But you're you could never be satisfied. Right. Like I obviously I spend my time thinking about that stuff too but the problem is is all the tournaments i've ever done well on i'm zoned into what i'm doing and what i need to get done and it's a very clear picture to me and 
that's when you do well because you start worrying about what other people are doing, which is natural, and we all do it to a certain extent. But once you let that overtake you, you've lost focus on what the actual goal is in mind. So if you ever tournament fish, trust me, it doesn't matter what stage you're on. If you're fishing the smallest of leagues to the big, because I fished them all. I fished the the biggest walleye tournaments, and I fished some of the smallest walleye tournaments. And you get the same feeling every single time. Like, what what are the other guys doing? Right. How are they doing? I'm whacking them right now, or I'm really struggling. And what I've found more times than not, if I struggled, a lot of people struggled. Mm-hmm. If I've done well, there's a plenty of people that have done well. So you can never, ever, ever be content. Uh, there was a tournament last year. I've won this tournament, and I won it with the same exact weight that I brought in, almost the same exact weight that I brought in this year. But we we got 10th place. Instead of winning. Instead of winning. You know, and that's that's because we kind of honestly, like a little bit, got satisfied with what we had. And I remember coming in, I'm like, oh, we for sure top two. Right. Nope. We heard the first wait at the dock and we're like, what? (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah, we (laughs) did not do as well as we thought we did. But we were satisfied. We were content out on the water. And then there was that disappointment knowing that we could have done more, probably done more. Mm -hmm. Now, would we have caught those fish? We probably would have fished a little harder, a little faster, made a little bit different decisions. But that was a really good learning experience. And I think as an angler and as somebody that likes to turn an angle and likes to compete, the reason we're so focused on one fish, and I, I think that's I, that's where I'm different than you. I look at people that multi-species angle. Like, I don't look at you less because you're fishing bass. We like to poke fun at each oh, other. Absolutely. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But it but, wouldn't be fun if we didn't. Yeah, that's right. That's why it's poking fun. But the, but the thing is, is like, we have a goal, and we're goal-orientated fishermen. Right. And I think that's nothing wrong with that. And then the goal is to get as good as we as good as we can at that fish, at, at that particular fish and what it does. And I think it's exciting when you find figure new things out. It's very frustrating when you're trying to figure new things out and it doesn't work. There's so many theories out there about different things. You make up your own theories when your own theories come together. It's a it's Boom! Like your mind just explodes. So should, should I'm gonna make... agree and disagree with you. So I have I have two things to go with this. First one, I think we should make an agreement right now on a on a non tour level event because simply don't have the skill to compete at that level. You and I in the next year need to fish one walleye tournament together. Uh oh, and we need to fish one bass tournament together. It'd be fun. I can throw the old disco around, right? Well, here's here's the thing. You you bring a lot more to the table in the bass fishing world than I do for you in the walleye fishing world, other than maybe an extra line if it's a trolling bite. You've got to remember, I've spent the last four years studying graphs. Well, learning how to no. drop shot walleyes. Let's be real. Listen, listen. When when you fish the national walleye tour, yep. I will never fish the National Walleye Tour. As a co-angler. Mm, you know what? I'm going to put it out there for all for any pros that are listening. I am not signing up to fish as Listen, a co-angler. They would be lucky to have you as a pro-angler in some Aww. circumstance. Not because you're good at it. because you understand fishing. I've had people in the boat that have held spinning rods wrong. I mean, not, I mean fine. It's, it's mm. what we sign up for. Everybody's on a fair level playing field. Everybody gets drawn. And I am not the only one. In fact, I guarantee every single person that fishes a National Walleye Tour has that story and multiples of them. Right. I've had guys not even be able to get out of their chair to be a second rod. I mean, but I don't even know where I was going with that. Other than I don't think you'd be a bad, you'd do that bad. Well, good. You understand fishing. You understand the concept. You understand things. I do. I just, I lose for anybody that's listening that hasn't. I don't think anybody's listening yet. Oh yeah. Think so? Yeah. Well, thank you. But so, (laughs) so my thing with being on the water is being on the water for me isn't exclusively about catching fish and we can get into that another time. 
I just enjoy the being on the water and the fishing. But so so the question that I had to go back to planning how you're going to fill your limit on places where you can't cull fish. So in bass fishing, there's superstitions. Oh. You if you catch a fish on your first cast of the day, you're done. You're done. That's the same in walleye world. Okay. But you also have to keep the first legal fish you catch that day. Even if it's like you can only put five or six in the live well? Well, and I haven't ran into that issue in the state of North Dakota where you can't call. Because in, in Minnesota, you can call. In North Dakota, you can't. And in the tournaments that I've fished in North Dakota, See, I my ran, first fish has been one of my biggest for the day. I ran into a, a fairly decent same scenario in Green Bay. First fish was a 26 and a half. Right. Second fish was a 27 and three quarter. Third fish was a 22 and a half, and I threw it back. Fourth fish was a 23 and three quarter and threw it back. Proceeded to not catch another fish for about five hours. Ended up catching an 18 and a half, threw it in, and a 17 and a half, and threw it in. Right. I cashed a check in that tournament because I had what, a ridiculous day too. What but, is that, at least five inches off of your total? Five inches? You're, you're but, talking you mean however five, many pounds that is. Six but, pounds? Yeah. I mean, just between 23s versus seven or, you know, yeah. versus 19. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. And that would have made, I cashed a check. I mean, I was 17th or something like that in the tournament, but it probably would have put me right up in the top 10. Right, because in a in a tournament where it's all decision making comes right. into effect, and I like it and I hate it. Those ones that you can call, it's like ah, throw them in. You throw the oh, first absolutely. five legals oh, in, and absolutely. then you go from there. And you don't have to worry about upsetting the old the old superstitions. But in a tournament where you can't call, like when we're fishing in North Dakota, you know, and I catch a third, you know, my first my first fish is a thirteen inch smallmouth. I don't want a thirteen inch smallmouth in my limit. No. But I don't want to be cursed for the rest of the day either. Boat in the boat? Well, that's your extra, right? Yeah. I mean, but some some of the tournaments will limit you. To five only? Well, to say like you get three. Because they're mostly three fish tournaments. Oh. And they'll say you get three. Hmm. Interesting. You know, and it's uh because the hey, see, I don't understand that realm. Like I'm right. I and I, I don't understand all of the rules or the reason why the North Dakota Game and Fish does yeah. it the way that they do. They obviously have to have reasons for it that even though maybe because the bass them. aren't as abundant in the state itself. Maybe. You know, and I, I don't know I don't know what it is. And if I make a if I make a stance on it and any of my bass buddies are listening, then they're gonna call me out on it. And if I take another stance and I'm wrong, then everybody don't else don't take seems, a stance. Right. And so I don't want to. You're impartial. You don't. You you're not right. against it and for it. But all I know is I'm not that good of a tournament angler, so I don't want to. I don't want to upset the spirits and curse myself <laughs> by not keeping the first 13 inch fish that I catch because it's legal. Well, I'm not good enough to be like, screw your curse. Like, I gotta listen to that. How did we get into tournament fishing? Like we're so far away from tournament fishing right now, like ice fishing. Like that's where we're at, but that's fine. I like I, I enjoy talking tournament fishing. I enjoy enjoy it. I'm just I looking here at all my ice stuff sitting here, and I'm like, how did we get on to open water tournament fishing? Yeah, but you're looking at the ice fishing stuff, and I'm looking at that Savage Gear swim bait, thinking about mm, let's get that out. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's simply the you know, um. You know, you're you you have the passion that drives you through through the different seasons of fishing. And and you know, for for me, I think that that working for fish addictions is good because I enjoy fishing. I enjoy being around being out on the water. I enjoy being out in the wilderness. I enjoy catching fish. But I I really enjoy working like trade shows you like to be around the industry itself i like to be around the people in the industry 
I have definitely missed that this year. Like we get to be around each other and that kind of stuff, but not having the trade shows, not having that stuff. I've missed that terribly. I ordered 5,000 business cards. I didn't even realize, I didn't even realize how much I liked it until mm-hmm. this year. Right. Because when, when you're in the moment, no, no matter how much, you know, so, so for, for somebody that in like, you know, loves and looks forward to trade shows every year, at the end of a day working the St. Paul Ice Show, you're exhausted. Oh, beyond. That's that's just how it is. In the moment, you don't think about it. Just like just like in the moment, you know, how how often have you realized, you know, how many how many times have you been out on the water and realized that this is something special? You know, how how many of your fishing memories did you think about and go, I'm going to remember this? Hmm. All the time. Is it? That we remember. A, sorry, I was on my phone. I know you were. I was reading something about Garmin. <laughs> Got sidetracked. I'm but, very sorry. But, you know, for, for somebody that spends as much time on the water in a year that you do, right? You have a lot of days that are not memorable. Oh. You have a lot. Uh, of, you have a lot of bad days of fishing. Yeah, but some for some reason you remember those just as much as you remember the real bad ones you remember. Right. The mediocre normal days. It's the limits of fish. It's the, but but I'm really really lucky Thor because like every experience for me is is new, right? Because right. I I don't know why, but people seem to be excited to jump in the boat or get on the ice with me because I'm just a guy that loves the fish right. and every day I and I'm happy that people like that. And I'm just, to me, I'm just another guy that just loves to fish and right. loves to get out there and loves to talk fishing and loves to to get, you know, to teach people and stuff like that. But I'm I'm all I'm blessed because I get to have a lot of different experiences. I get right. to fish with guys uh that are on the staff that are seasoned veterans that we kind of get in the boat and we think the same. I get to fish with people that want to absorb all the information I give them. I get people that have no clue what's going on. I mean, right. and for me, that's a lot of fun because it's, it differs thing. It makes things interesting all the time. Right. And, and beyond that, there are definitely plenty of days I forget oh, about right, what happened. Right. No doubt. But you know, the, the other interesting thing is, you know, you, you get to get on the water with a lot of different people, you know, from the fish addiction staff to, industry leaders and sponsors and their research and development teams and their marketing teams and understand that that whole process. But the other part of it is you're a human being, right? Yeah. You, you have people that you're a fan of. Oh, just like sure. I have people that I'm a fan of and you get to get on the water with the people that you're a fan of and compete with them. That's what's fun. Compete with them, collaborate with them. Yeah plan outrageous things with them and you know it <laughs> we just gave away a garmin live scope we did we gave we away, get to do some pretty outrageous things that's we do. pretty fun we do we gave away a garmin live scope literally all the dude had to do was make a comment under a video and hit subscribe i'm gonna make a challenge right now okay If we get a thousand views on Facebook so I can rub it in Thor's face that people like to watch this kind of stuff on video, because granted, that was the separation. We'll give another live scope away. But this puts it on everybody because we've only had like 400 video Wait, views. Tell me, tell me. We don't put this on Facebook. Sorry. Well, we do put it on Facebook. Well, but no, we don't. <laughs> We we promote it on Facebook. I'm gonna reset. So <laughs> I'm allowed to screw up though. You are, you are, but I just want to make sure like okay. this is not so, a Facebook. Yeah, no. So if we can get a thousand views on YouTube, and now this is gonna take you guys watching and sharing to share it and get it. We'll give another way another live scope. That's not we're not gonna give away a live scope to the people from this. Fish addictions will give another live scope away. Okay, it's crazy that we gave one away, and the opportunity to give a second one away is even crazier. 
So if you guys watching this are not sharing it and getting a thousand views on this, which is not that many. Right. I uh I if it doesn't happen, screw it. Well, I'll keep it. I'm stupid, I know, but we're doing it. I said it, it's out there, it's happening. We're not again. I'm uncomfortable. I don't care how uncomfortable you are. I uh we're uh I I like the fact that people like what we're doing, and I really am truly I, I think that if you like what we're doing, it shouldn't take a live scope to share it and to to tell other people about it and to check out all the stuff that we're doing. But I'm feeling generous. I really am blessed. We are blessed to have that opportunity to put something like that into somebody's hands. And we'll figure out how we give it away. But first, we got to hit a thousand views. I, I have... N- I have almost no skin in this game. Like, literally none. My heart is just pounding. Are you going to cry? I... <laughs> like, I'm, like, white-knuckling my chair. Okay, so... so let's, let's... You know what's crazy about this? As of right now, as we speak, you don't even own a live scope. No. I, I literally own zero ice fishing electronics. A live scope is not just an I, ice fishing electronic Thor. No, I know, but like we did a whole video on it. I, well, I'm aware, but like, <laughs> I, the 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 only thing that I can use electronically to help me during ice fishing right now is my cell phone. Like I don't own anything. That's because you have really good friends. I do have good friends, but like. <laughs> So 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 I just want to get this I just want to get this straight because it's also yeah, going to be my job let's to let's clarify it promote if this video so gets wh- 1000 views on YouTube. Okay. 1000. Are we including Spotify views? No, we are okay. including YouTube YouTube only. views only. Okay, 1000 views on YouTube. We will come up with another Garmin live scope giveaway. That's where I'm going to put them. Right there. When I edit. So it's going to be a thousand views right here. Mm-hmm. Top of the pointer finger. Yeah. Which is not that much. No. That's 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 actually only almost like just doubling what we normally get. Right. Why can't? Come on. You haven't shared it yet? Okay. So 1,000 views. Boop. I'm, I'm going to have to call Tyler to edit. So I've been spending the last week like trying to set this up so I don't have to have Tyler help me edit these so that and I can get them out in like an hour or two. So Tyler... All right, so 1,000 views will trigger a... Live scope giveaway. Garmin live scope giveaway that we will figure out later. Yeah, we'll figure out how. I mean, how? Not later, but... We'll, we'll, if we get the 1,000 views, we'll figure that out within a day or two of the 1,000 views. Yep. I, yeah, why not? Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to make the ruling right now on how we're going to do this. Oh, because because you're being generous, giving away a live scope. I think we're going to let you pick how it's how it's given away. And typically when we do these giveaways, we do a random generator. So there's no bias mm-hmm. involved whatsoever. Yeah. And so I am definitely going to take this one in my own hands. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to post a video. At some point, it will be linked below. And on that video, the person who... No, it's going to be something. But probably... I want to give it to somebody that supports fish addiction. Right. The the person who Mike thinks deserves it the most will get it. So plead your case. It won't be me. That's exactly what it should be. And it won't be anybody. And that if they listen to the earlier tied. part of this podcast, they'll know my weakness. Right. <laughs> Man is just giving away a scope. <laughs> Yo, Hayden, you paying attention from behind the camera? Get yourself a live scope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one of those. You know, well, uh, look, don't get me wrong. If I'm going to give away a live scope, you better be subscribed. And which is free. Yeah. We're not asking for any for anybody to pay anything. You need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
I I don't think that's at the heart. I think we put out some pretty it's cool really stuff with fish addictions and travel all over where a lot of people would like to go. We put a lot of time and effort into it. The least people could do is support us. Can we go to Lake Fork? <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. It's not out of the question. I want to go to Lake Fork. We'll go. Or Gunnersville. So I'm really, I'm really sad. I was well, gonna go to Texas first, for classic. First is first things for well, it's rescheduled. You'll be fine. I know, maybe. First things first, you gotta get that thousand views on here. Thousand views. Bam, thousand view goal. It's in the title. Done. Which is just cakewalk. I just it's actually I'm just that I even agreed to a thousand views kind of ticks me I know, off. That, but that, that's that fine. That was part of why my heart raced. Yeah, but you wanna know why? Because you know. We don't expect 10,000 views on this. We hope to get that. We hope you guys give us right. 10,000 views. If we get 10,000 views, who knows what could happen here. But the real realistic part about this is, is we're doing this because we're having fun. I'm having a lot of fun. It's midnight on a Friday. And 12.30 in the morning on a Friday, and we're filming a podcast. Is it really that late? Well, 12.20 a.m. Yeah, it is. But we're just having fun doing this. And... I don't want to quit having fun. No. And we have the opportunity to do this. And we had a lot of fun giving away the first one. And I really, you know what? Fish Addictions was basically the first thing to give away giant prizes. And I'm talking augers, houses, electronics. I mean, we've done it all and we continue to do it because we appreciate everybody that supports us and we feel like hey if you're gonna go out of your way and you're gonna watch us and enjoy what we're doing thank you i don't think you out there expect to have that but it doesn't hurt right and you know what the giveaways are a little bit selfish it feels good you know it does it well, feels, like i said i it mean it feels good to make people happy yeah and and the the winner of the live scope um, when we the the first one that we gave away this year, I was having probably like I mean twenty twenty was a shitty year, and I was probably having like one of my top ten worst days of the year. Just I didn't feel good. I just wasn't feeling good, and the messages that I received from the winner after we announced that he won a brand new live scope. Let's be honest. They felt good. If you want to be, day. If you want to be honest. LiveScope is a $2,800 unit. Yeah. Worth every penny, but there is a good portion of people out there that don't want to budget $2,800 into their ice fishing arsenal. But why? It, but if they have a chance to win it, why wouldn't you? Right. It's not for a, free. And a lot of it, it's not even a want, it's a can't. Oh, sure. But that's up to each individual, right? And there's a lot of people that own it. To the people that own it, I would guess a giant percentage of them love it. So we're enough with this. You get us to where we need to go to give it away. We're going to give it away. But I also have a secret giveaway in mind for 200,000 subscribers. But we're a long ways from that. But I don't know if Mike's going to be happy when we announce it. So we're going to wait until <laughs> we get closer. We've had discussions. But anyways, we've implied. We, uh, we are doing kind of a, I'm, I'm going to give this away. I don't know if this will come out before this episode airs or after. It's probably before. So we're actually going to do an episode of what everybody's asked us to do. We are currently researching lakes in North Dakota. We're going to keep it to North Dakota. Oh, yeah. This is going to be out way before that. And yeah. So make sure to be watching for this mm-hmm. right now as we speak myself and some of the staff guys are researching lakes in north dakota and i know that you guys have already watched the south dakota perch episode or if you haven't it's coming out soon yeah, this might be out before that well whatever we just did a we just did an absolute banger perch episode in south dakota like literally i just got back yeah like you drove almost all night yeah like and literally interrupted your night back with your family to do this yeah i mean we literally just got back from like an absolute banger and i got to give a shout out to isaac and jacob at elite south dakota guide service uh out of watertown Look those guys up. They definitely know what they're doing. It was an absolute banger. Isaac's a good buddy of mine. 
Uh, we fished together a few years ago and always kept in touch. And him and his brother have the guide service. And wow, pretty awesome. And uh, But anyways, we did a live in what we're now calling the mobile fish camp, which is the Big Bite, which is awesome, by right, the way. Ready for this? The announcer voice. <clears throat> live from the mobile fish camp. Fish Addictions TV brought to you live from the Big Bite Recreational Trailers Mobile Fish Camp. That was good. Thank you. By the way, well received. Oh, I know so. we were given the the garment away. Uh, we gave it away. Uh, I think it's. Yeah, I don't even know where it's at. I don't care where it's at. It was well received. Great participation. We're actually. I, we're going to continue to do this. It led to us working at midnight to figure out how to do the podcast live for everybody on a Friday. Yeah. It's like, great. I'm going to keep pointing out that it's midnight on a Friday. I don't care. We're up. We're going at it. I wasn't sleeping anyway. So my dog is going to be. But we are ass. back back to this. So we just get back from the South Dakota Perch up. So we do this live. Half the questions that we get in this live are how do you break down a new body of water? How do you figure out how to fish a body of water that. You know nothing about, but want to go fish. <laughs> you want to know my answer? Yeah. I, uh, I throw out like three Google searches and I call Mike and Taylor to see if they were ever there before. Yeah. And if they don't know, then I uh, I drive out there anyway and I put my boat in the water and... Try it out. Well, I mostly just hang out with the dog. But that's what we're doing. Yeah. We're literally... Researching North Dakota right now, and we're going to go after perch because perch is kind of what we are all enthralled with in North Dakota. We've picked North Dakota. We're not, we had to limit ourselves to a certain area. There's a lot of big perch in a lot of places. Oh, but that's the thing is like, there's a, there's a lot of gold at the end of the rainbow Mm -hmm. in North Dakota. So there's a lot of places that have maybe been discovered, but not by us and not by a lot of people. So there may be little gems, uh, diamonds in the rough, maybe, you know. Yeah, no, it's going to be a lake so, X, maybe even X squared. We are, we are literally going out to the middle of North Dakota. We are setting fish camp down, and we it's are... Hydraulic, by the way. We are, yeah, we're going to hydraulically set the fish camp down on the ground, which is the big bite. And we are going to research and fish a lake. Now, we may strike out, but we're going to show it. But we are going to show you guys how we find bodies of water that have those little gems. Mm -hmm. The gems that are, when you put the work in, it's, it's so worth it. Like, you will strike out way more times than you don't. And we are going to spend three days, I think we, three or four days... I mean, we're already started on it. We're already researching. We've already been texting each other back and forth, different netting reports and lake areas and different lakes we'd like to try. So we're going to try to, you know, we may hit six, seven, eight different lakes in three days, maybe 10. Uh, But we're working on it right now. We're filming it as we are, as we're going. It's a process, you know, checking the internet, checking stocking reports, uh, netting reports and, and, years and what year classes are coming out of there and what percentage is coming out of there where the location's at you know we're there's a lot of work going into this right now as we speak and we started we literally left south dakota and we were on our phones deciding you know we we've always wanted to do this episode but we were so afraid of striking out and not having any fish for anybody but at the same time i think everybody can appreciate this because there's not a lot of people that go outside their comfort zone. There's a lot of people that go where they just know they can catch fish. I hope this. I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope this encourages people to do what we're doing because when you strike gold, well, I mean, we struck gold last year on our perch episode in North Dakota. I mean, I have that beautiful fish up there at 16 inches hanging up on the wall. And it may very likely be the biggest perch I ever catch in my life. Right. But that was on a lake that I'd never fished before that we've researched and went down to. And I was very tickled with what came out of there. And if you didn't watch the episode, you better go back and check that one out. 
uh, I think it was North Dakota perch beat down or something like that. I don't even know, but they were giants. So go back to last season to watch that. But well, and we're yeah. going to try to replicate that. And and I think there's a very very good probability we strike out, and you're going to see that. Right. There's a very good probability well, with the research we're putting in that we're going to whack them too. So, so I think one one part of this is at, at least that that you can understand you know people can identify with everybody has a buddy probably not a friend because a friend would tell you where the bite was but everybody has a buddy that's always on big fish everybody has a buddy that knows somebody Mm -hmm. the buddies may not but the buddies know somebody you know somebody that knows somebody that's on Mm -hmm. big fish and that's how these lakes get out and they but they rub it in Good for them if they put in the work to find it. I know, but also screw them. Let's be... No, that's not true. That wouldn't be a good friendship base. No. But... Yeah, but what do you... I mean, guys, look for this episode because I'm I'm on the edge of my seat just thinking about it. I'm like, we have had episodes where we didn't particularly do the best, but this episode is... We're going to show it whether we catch a fish or no fish. Or lots of fish, or lots of little fish. It may turn into a series. Ooh, yo, I am a sucker for series on YouTube. Well, that's the thing is, like, I don't know what this is going to turn into. We're going into this blind. I only thing I know right now is that we're researching lakes as we yep. speak. Yep, and I know where the fish house is getting set down at because we have collectively decided on an area kept to set it down in base camp and we're gonna go probably within an hour of base camp all the way around in a circle right well if you're going more than an hour you might as well bring the base camp with you right it's glory right portable fish fish so i mean (laughs) we are i'm excited i'm excited and nervous i bet and if it works out and we find the next glory hole the next glory hole perch, Thor. No, I know. Well, you had that look. Well, no. So the my my question and in, in my the pause was, you know, I I know that the target is slew, small body of water type situations. No name lakes even right. But somebody discovered Devil's Lake. By probably a bunch of people. The Devil's Lake's not well. For body. sure, there are a few bodies of water that we're looking at that are bigger than slew type little. Th- right. Those are not out of the question. We're just putting ourselves in what we feel is the the epicenter of Mecca. Right. What, what undiscovered hap- perch sloughs? What happens if you discover the next Lake Urban? Because everybody knows where Lake Irvin is at this point. Like you're talking walleyes, perch, everything, or just well, the perch you catch in Lake Irvin are giant when you catch them. Right. Well, and I mean the walleyes aren't skinny. Like those no. things ain't skipped a meal. If we if we find the next big hole, you're gonna see high fives. You're gonna see emotions because we're gonna work hard at it. We've be already wild. been working hard at it. It's gonna be wild. We've been texting each other back and forth, different netting reports, I know. different lakes, different areas. We've gone back and forth. Like, I finally just put my foot down and said, this is where we're setting base camp. So, boys, it's an hour from here because I'm not picking this thing up and moving it every day. We're, this is where we're going. Right. We're going to set it down. We're going to go fish. We're going to do it here, so let's make it happen. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lakes within an hour of this place. Right. All of them have potential. So how do we're going to show you how we get from point A to point B to actually fishing. Right. But in order to do that, we need to make sure that you are recovered from a long weekend of filming in South Dakota. Yeah, just need a day or two, and then we're back at it. Guys, hug the kids, kiss the wife. Yeah. Watch a couple of basketball games, and Monday, away Mon- we go. Monday is a day and a half from now. Yeah. So... Let's 
I think we. Uh, I think. I we, don't think a lot of people really understand what we do. No. We just get back and we're already like hyped up for the next one. Yeah. We have families. We have kids. We have jobs. We have responsibilities. He's using, he's using the royal we. I am very single. Well, you have jobs and responsibilities. Yeah, but and dude, we're I here. Mean, I'm, like I'm not a. Sh- I'm not. Too, I literally backed the I'm big not, bite into the shop, unloaded it, and we're gonna reload it, and we're gonna go. Yeah, but I'm not too proud to be like, "Hey, I'm single." Well, that's fine. So, There's nothing like, wrong with that, is it? You know, watching, listening, single mm. and willing to mingle. Yeah, yeah. My mom. Anyways, I think we're talking about this episode. I hope you guys are excited for it because I'm certainly excited for it. And Thor's getting tired. And we're an hour and 11 minutes yeah, into this podcast. That, that's mostly, yeah. I could keep talking. I know. But, but if... You know what's frustrating, though? That if we're going to keep talking, we should stop this and start a new podcast? Why? Because I need a bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> And we have a lot. We have a lot in here that we need to recap in general. Well, recap us. Well, if this video gets to one thousand, I mean, there was a lot before that. I know, but these are these are the big. If we don't retouch on them, people will remember. So you do the hand thing. I'll do the rules. If this podcast that you're watching right now or listening to, so if you're listening to it. And you haven't gone to the YouTube page, go to Fish Addictions TV, find this podcast, which is episode six. Go find episode six. Like it. It, it will literally be titled view it. 1,000 Views for Garmin Giveaway. So, we're going to make it easy. If you're listening to this on any other platform other than YouTube, go to YouTube, watch this video. Like it, subscribe to our page, and you will help get us to the point to give another Garmin Garmin Live Scope away. Mm-hmm. We are not giving, just to clarify, we are not giving a Live Scope giveaway in this video or for watching this video. For getting mm-hmm. the for well, kind of, but for Anybody- getting for getting the views to what it needs to be is gonna trigger the live scope giveaway. At a later date. Can we do can we do anybody that comments on this gets an extra point in the giveaway in the future? Gets entered twice. Mm-hmm. Done. Okay. So 1,000 views on this video triggers a Garmin Live Scope giveaway. Any comments on this video gets you an extra into it. So you have to so if you end so if you comment on this video and you enter the giveaway, you get two entries. So that goes back. We have to do a random giveaway. Shoot. That's better anyways. I don't like the pressure. All right. Mike doesn't like the pressure of picking. Yeah. I I like the pressure of having you pick. I'll pick. So your favorite comment. I'm not com- afraid to pick. Your, your favorite comment gets a Fish Addictions goodie bag also. That's what that's what we'll do to your favorite. Fish Addictions clothing gift yeah. certificate. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. It's fine. 50 bucks. Okay. So, 1,000 views equals a Garmin Live Scope giveaway contest in the future. A comment below that I pick. Yes. Enters you for the chance to have Mike pick his favorite comment for a $50 Fish Addictions apparel giveaway. And it double enters you for the Live Scope giveaway. Yeah, because I'm not going to forgive forget you. Right. All right. There you have it. There we have it. Other than that, we just talked about tournament fishing. We talked about what we're doing on Fish Addictions TV in the next probably episode you guys are going to see. And we talked about Not a little being bit so of everything. judgmental to judgmental. each other. All right, guys, we're out of here. This is Fish Addictions, the real talk. Did I do it all right? This yeah. is can Fish Addictions. Can I do it again? Yeah, I'll do it. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Fish Addictions, the real talk. This was episode six with Mike Olson and Thor Skoy. We hope you guys are all having a great night. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. And we will see you guys later.